Zhao Tsena. I'm with the Ethical AI team at Google. And this is a paper titled Total, uh, Towards a Critical Race Methodology and Algorithm Fairness. This is joint work with my colleagues Emily Denton, Andrew Smart, and Jamila smith -Lau. So I want to start this talk with a quote from W.E.D.B. Du Bois. In this quote, Du Bois is having a dialogue with a white man who is trying to justify the superiority of the white race to him. And Du Bois throughout is kind of toying with the man, entertaining his arguments, and offering suffering, uh, simple counterexamples. But in the last, Du Bois discusses what's at the heart of the matter. In trying to define who is black and who is white, one must look at the relational and unequal nature of race in the United States. The white man says, but what is this group, and how do we differentiate it? And how, do you, how can you call it black when you admit it is not black? And Du Bois responds, I recognize it quite easily and with full legal sanction. The black man is a person who must ride Jim Crow in Georgia. I want to highlight this quote because this is an old problem. I mean, this was written in 1923. The slipperiness of the category of race and its use in the social sciences, and for that matter, all quantitative and statistical methods, has to deal with the reality of what race is ontologically. One cannot simply de-race a data set or model, or even meaningfully study racially disparities of algorithmic systems without understanding what race is and how race operates. However, defining race is a task that's rarely given its due, not only within quantitative social science, but also within machine learning in this new field we call algorithmic fairness. The reality is that racial categorization scheme is abound, defined by nation states and shifting across time. The construction of racial classifications are, like all projects and classifications, political projects. More specifically, there are what uh, Michael Omni and Howard Wernon refer to as racial projects. Racial projects are simultaneously an interpretation, representation, or explanation of racial identities and meanings, in an effort to organize and distribute resources along particular racial lines. These racial projects and their attendant racial classifications tell particular stories about who is favored at the top of a racial hierarchy and who is relegated to the bottom of that hierarchy. In a word, they highlight the social constructiveness of race, as Ian Hacking has said, the act of making people up. Our current racial categorization schemas, for instance, those which undergird the US Census and also support the work that uh, was just talked about, um, has their historical roots and racial projects steeped in white supremacy. Uh, this is actually not a new problem to most social scientists. It's not even new to FATSTAR. We're building on a conversation which began last year at this conference where computational social science, Samantha Benthal, uh, Sebastian Benthal, and, his criti and critical race scholar Bruce D. Haynes outlined this problem and proposed an unsupervised machine learning method to detect quasi-racial dimensions of segregation and then using those categories in fair machining, machine learning methods in place of racial categories. And while we agree with their assessment, we diverge from their proposed solution, which we detail in the paper, I won't go into because of time constraints. But the tendency to critically adopt racial categories as though they were simply an, referencing an attribute of an individual is a persistent and widespread issue in the social science, and now within machine learning. It's not a problem to be solved with a, simple a single methodological approach, but rather will take continual engagement with sociology of race and critical race methodologies. So we have four provocations for algorithmic fairness as a way forward. So the first provocation is that a critical race challenge to group fairness. Because group fairness is predicated on abstracting racial categories into a mathematically comparable form, group fairness, group based fairness criteria deny the hierarchical nature of the social, economic, and political complexity of the social groups under consideration. Black feminist cultural geographer Catherine McKendrick, following Patricia Hill Collins, discusses how such approaches have resulted in a flattened geography, which obscured the unique oppressions encountered by black women, instead of treating oppressed social groups as interchangeable. Ladson, Billings, and Tate levy a critical race critique of liberal education paradigms, which assume that all difference is both analogous and equivalent. And political philosopher Charles W. Mills notes that the liberal underpinnings of both theoretical and methodological approaches towards equalization have historically tended to have a significant detrimental consequences for racial minorities and only serve to advance a white racial contract. Our second provocation is a call to center the process of conceptualizing and operationalizing race, and in doing so, considering its multidimensionality. Following the recent work around measurement and fairness uh, by Abby Jacobs in her tutorial at this conference and Hannah Wallach, for instance, we suggest taking seriously the problems of measurement modeling when considering racial variables. Sociologists of race, Wendy Roth and Ann Morning, disentangle different dimensions of race and race membership, including observed race based on phenotype and interaction, self-described ancestry, and self-identification. This multi-dimensional understanding of race demands that different dimensions require different techniques of operationalization. More importantly, each of these dimensions affects different outcomes. 
For instance, observed race by phenotype has implications for computer vision and uh, computer vision models, while self-identification may be more appropriate for models understanding political mobilization. Our third provocation expands the frame beyond race classification and asks why, we, why we're doing race classification at all. We call to instead focus on the processes of racism. This follows the lead of other fields like public health in understanding that not race as a determining factor for relevant health outcomes, but processes of racism and social stratification. So for instance, public health researchers Shonda Ford and Nina T. Harwa propose a methodology for the operationalization of race within health equity studies as a multidimensional, contextual specific, context specific variable with a relational component to explicitly capture the effects of racial stratification on health outcomes. Taking race seriously within algorithmic fairness would be to understand how processes of racial stratification are implicated in the workings of socio-technical systems. Lastly, we call for algorithmic fairness to center marginalized communities in the processes of research into the fairness of uh, machine learning and ethics of technology more broadly. And this has been echoed several times at this conference, including by Rachel Cow and Mike Cattell. Again, critical race public health scholars Ford and Harwa call for researchers to involve community members in all aspects of research. Um, so to obtain necessary consent and buy-in, to share findings with the research community, and to set the research agenda more broadly. So groups like Stop LEPD Spying Coalition have performed participatory research with communities of color to understand ecologies of harm, data surveillance, and disenfranchisement built around predictive policing algorithms. They've mobilized around a prison abolitionist framework as a means to diagnose, strategize, and organize against carceral technologies. We end by quoting, uh, quoting from J. Khadija Abdul Rahman, who in response to Benthal and Hayes last year, underlies the point of expanding the narrow frame from classification and understanding the concerns of affected groups. She states, it is not just that classification systems are inaccurate or biased, it is who has the power to classify, to determine the repercussions slash policies associated thereof and their relation to historical and accumulated injustice. We encourage you to continue this conversation with us in our craft sessions algorithmically encoded identities and the control Z AI zine fair where stop LAPD spine coalition will be holding a workshop. Thanks. Thank you.